Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. This is the third in a brief series on the key rate shift technique. Two days ago, I just explained the advantage of a key rate shift over traditional duration. Yesterday, I showed a simple key rate duration calculation. Today, I'd like to just explain the key rate shift technique using the example in Bruce Tuckman for my FRM customers because it's a challenging example if it's the first time you've seen it. It is the key rate shift technique. We start with the graphic and first just imagine a flat yield curve at 5%. On the x-axis here I've got 60 periods because this is a 30 year term structure. Each period is 6 months. So that's 30 years along the bottom, 60 periods. And then we've got the spot rate on the y-axis and we start by imagining what I didn't draw here which is a flat yield curve at 5% that means the spot rate is 5% for every period. Duration you'll recall is simple and convenient but it's unrealistic because it assumes that that yield curve shifts in parallel so if it starts flat at 5% and we shift or shock the yield curve, we're going to do the whole curve in parallel. That's the simplistic and convenient idea behind duration. Enter key rate shifts to insert more realism and here the first step with the key rate shift technique is to select some key rates along the yield curve. And we could select any, anywhere from 5 to 11 is pretty common I think I'm following Tuckman's example here and selecting, I'm keeping it simple, and selecting four key rates, 2, 5, 10, and 30 year. So if we look at the red line, that is the five year key rate. It peaks at 10 because again we've got 10 six month periods equals five years. And the idea with the key rate shift technique is that we're going to just shock that key rate. In this case it's the five year rate and we're going to shock it up from 5% to 5.01% or just a small one base point. So here we shock the 5% key rate up to 5.01 plus one basis point. And I think of this as pulling on a string because the five-year key rate has neighboring rates. Why is that? Well, we only selected four key rates out of the whole 30-year term structure. A lot of the key rates, there's most of the key rates, are in between those key rates. So here in the case of the five-year rate, its neighboring rates are all those rates from five down to two because two's my next key rate on the down and the other neighboring rates go from 5 up to 10 years because that 10 years is my next key rate. So we shock the key rate from 5 plus 1 basis point and then the neighboring rates get influenced as well. In this case I'm going to do the simplest thing possible. Turns out to be pretty useful anyway. Linear interpolation. Any of the neighboring rates are going to get shocked up as well and so that's why I say it's sort of like pulling on a string we only catch the key rate and the neighboring rates we leave the rest of the yield curve alone but if we've got a rule for each of the four key rates and each of the neighboring rates are going to be influenced you can see four key rates all of the rates along the yield curve can be influenced in some way so that's the graphic of it now if we look at the numbers, here following Bruce Tuckman, I've got a fully amortizing bond with a semi-annual coupon, meaning every six months it pays $3,250. The par yield curve again starts flat at 5%. All of the spot rates are 5%. We have 60 semi-annual periods for 30 years. The first thing I can do is just price that fully amortizing bond. We could use the calculator. I'm using the built-in Excel function. I've got a future value of zero, that's what indicates it's fully amortizing. So the, that's the fair price of the bond and now we go to four key rates and we've got a line here where we shock the two-year key rate and reprice the bond. And literally, just to show you what I have did there, is if we look down here, so here's the periods, here's the two-year, uh, four period is two years, 
here is the 5% has been shocked up to 5 plus 1 basis point. And then I simply take the present value of that cash flow. So here's the shock of the key rate. And then you can see its neighboring rates on the down all get increased 1 basis point. And then the neighboring rates running up to 5 years, they all get uh, influenced also via linear interpolation. So in shocking the 2-year key rate, I have bumped up all of the spot rates, the neighboring spot rates running from 0 to 5 years. And the rest of the curve on down, I leave alone at the 5% spot. But, and so all I, I really did do a manual calculation here of taking the present value of all of the cash flows based on these new spot rates. But the only cash flows being influenced are the key rate and its neighbors. So here is the new price of the bond based on just that two year shift. It's a hundred, it's a little bit less. And in this cell, I've got the key rate of the zero, which is analogous to the dollar value of the zero. What is it? It's just the change in price. It's the initial price minus the price after I shock or shift the two year rate. So it is the dollar price change of the bond if I shock the, this key rate by one basis point. If I add them all up, I'm going to get a number that's very close to the dollar value of the zero for the bond under our traditional measure. Key rate duration is analogous to our traditional duration. And here we can see it's the key rate of the zero divided by the price of the bond multiplied by 10,000. That's really just to convert from units because the key rate of the zero is just one basis point. Duration is a 1%. And what I get here is 0.36. What does that mean? That is the approximate percentage change in the price of the bond if I shock just the key rate here, the two-year key rate, by 1%. And remember the difference is that's just like duration, except I'm not changing the whole yield curve by 1%, just the key rate and its neighbors. So if I shift just the key rate and it by by 1% and the also ensuing impact on the neighboring rates, I'm going to get approximately a 0.36% change in the price of the bond. So I get a sensitivity that's customized to local shifts and as you would expect, if I add the key rate durations up, I'm going to get, in this case, a number 11.38 very close to the traditional duration of the bond, which here means if I shift the yield curve in entirely by 1%, I'm going to get approximately 11.38% change in the price of the bond. So my key rate durations approximately sum to my traditional duration. My key rate of the zero approximately sums to my traditional dollar value of the zero, also known as price value of the basis point. But you can see here with some incremental additional complexity, we've now, we now have a means to treat the yield curve with a, a tad bit more realism than shifting the yield curve in, un in lockstep by in parallel. So that's a summary of the Tuckman approach to key rate shift technique. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.